half in the bag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mr. Plinkett, we'll be there right away. Hey, Mike, we gotta get over to Mr. Plinkett so we can fix his VCR. Uh, uh, Jay, we're not having a story this time because the movie we just saw didn't have one either. Hey everyone, it's Slenderman. The new film based on something someone made up on the internet. Four high school girls summon the Slenderman to do something. Uh, they summon him by watching a video on the internet. From a message board, from the dark web. Woo! It's the dark web because everything is dark and colored black. It's the dark web! That's where you find Slenderman! In my opinion, stick to creepy pasta. And yes, I am talking about Olive Garden. Da -da 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 -da. Boy, Mike, we should look into getting the air conditioning fixed here. I'm sweating more than the producers of Slenderman when they saw this weekend's box office results. <laughs> Wait, there were results? Well, we saw Slenderman. Uh, we didn't see Mission Impossible, Free Fall, or whatever it's called. Yeah. We didn't see the Meg. Ant Man uh, versus the Wasp. We didn't see Ant Man versus versus the Wasp. Whatever. Is that the new title? Of it? I don't know. We didn't see uh, uh, Deadpool two. No, but we saw Slender Man. Well, we have to. We should talk about because there's not a lot to talk about with the actual movie. Uh, we'll give our uh, uh, we'll give our opinions on the movie, but there's a whole backstory uh, behind why we chose to see this film and the troubles we had seeing the film. That's right, Jay. Well, you all know about our history with Slender Man. We recently made a video called Did Brother Media Invent Slender Man? Spoilers, we didn't. Uh, we do not want to take credit for the Slender Man phenomenon. We definitely uh, don't want to take any credit for this movie. No, or, or, or what happened in real life. Yes. Um, which is the Wisconsin connection to Slender Man as it became a worldwide news. After hearing this week, for the first time from two girls, their own voices about the night they allegedly lured their friend into the woods and repeatedly stabbed her, police say, leaving her to die. Last May, they lured her to a wooded area where police say they stabbed her 19 times. When investigators asked why they did it, they both had the same answer, Slender Man. Two 12-year-old uh, girls in Waukesha. Which is just outside of Milwaukee here. Yes. Uh, and this is all documented in the uh, HBO documentary, yes. Beware the Slender Man, right? I think that's what's called, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the two girls named Morgan Geyser and Anissa Weir, I actually remember their names because it's on the news so much, sure. uh, stabbed their friend 19 times. Uh, who miraculously survived. Luckily she lived. I, I think uh, things would be different with the release of this movie. If, yes. I, I don't even know if this movie would have happened if she had actually died. I, I think the one, and coincidentally, the lead girl in this movie kind of looks like Morgan Geyser. Oh, yeah. The girl from another great horror film, Wish Upon. Yes. I forget her, her name. Uh, she, she, was in, she was in The Conjuring when she was like 10 years old, yeah. and now, oh, we'll just put her in these crappy horror movies. <laughs> She's working. She's working. She's working. Making that money. Uh, she kind of looks like Morgan Geyser, who I believe was the, the ringleader. Yes. She, she was the kind of crazy one. I she's guess the one, if you see the documentary and they show like them interrogating her, yeah. and she's just like completely uh, emotionally distant from everything. The other one seemed more like a follower. Yeah. And then the, the Morgan one was not the one who did the stabbing. She convinced the other one. I don't know, a Charles Manson-y situation. Mm. Uh, but anyways, that's what happened, and um, Hollywood wisely chose to make a movie about the Slender Man phenomenon. Not based on that story, just obviously Slender Man's been around for a long time now. They're probably five, six, ten years too late on making a Slender Man movie. It's like the Angry Birds movie. That shit was popular a decade ago. What are you doing making this now? Um, but the backstory is that they, they made the movie uh, and then the studio started to get cold feet because I think it was the father of either the girl that was stabbed or one of the girls involved with that incident uh, was saying, hey, this is incredibly tasteless. To make a movie exploiting or sensationalizing this, you know, real tragic event, even though the movie isn't about that actual event. Slender Man is a film about a fictional horror character 
but it is not being shown in the Milwaukee area where that character inspired a notorious real life crime. They're, they're probably better not showing it because they would just have empty theaters anyway. <laughs> that's very true. I mean, it's not like they weren't, they're were skipping out on Star Wars or well, something. Well, that's, that's the other thing is like leading up to the release of this movie, there's been hardly no publicity for it. Right. It's respectable. They're not, to get, they're not taking a financial hit. It's a win-win for them, is what I'm trying to say. It's a win-win for the theater chains, mainly Marcus, yeah. Marcus Theaters, which, which owns a lot of the theaters um, in, in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, they're not taking a financial hit, and they don't look like dirtbags for, yeah. for, for playing this movie. I think they kind of like said, okay, you know, here's where it happened in Waukesha. Let's, let's circle a 30-mile radius. Yeah, how about we and, don't and, play and, in and, these and, and, theaters? Because no, 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 no. it is playing at a lot of Marcus Theaters, but one's way up north. Yeah more way out west, um, but not in the general vicinity of where this happened. Right. So it's like, oh, you know, they, they, they save face by not doing that, but they're, they're not missing out on those 11 ticket sales. Well, that's, yeah, we drove down to Kenosha, Wisconsin to see this film. That was the closest theater playing it. So we actually had to go out of our way to see it. Uh, we put in more effort to see this movie than to see movies that we are actually interested in seeing. Uh, but the other uh, n thing to note is that the studio started to get cold feet about the, the violence in the film. One, they wanted to be PG-13 so kids could go see it. Uh, but also, they didn't. They thought because you want kids to see this. Oh yeah, Damn, absolutely. Am I right? uh, <laughs> and also, they were concerned about it being disrespectful or exploitative of uh, real life violence that happened in association with Slenderman. So they ripped all that shit out. Half the stuff in the trailer is not in the movie. The, the boyfriend character disappeared? The boyfriend character disappeared. they show his death in the trailer? Uh, yes, he's about to, he's like falling off a bridge or something. And there's cut that out of the movie. Let's make a horror film and then cut out all the horror. And then just release a, a, a partial film into theaters and not advertise it. It's like, why even bother? If you're gonna hack the movie apart and then not advertise it, don't even release the fucking thing. Well, there was a different story before the movie came out, how the producers of the film they looked at their contract and it said they could bid to other uh, distributors like, oh, maybe this should go on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Sony, we're going to go like see if Amazon wants to buy this or Netflix, you know. And so it was it was and Netflix of, said, this is too bad even for us. And we made bright and we released mute and we released Cloverfield Paradox and we released Tau. And Amazon will release anything. So it was, it was a game of Slenderman hot potato. Yeah, and nobody wanted it, so they're stuck with Sony. The music stopped when Sony caught the hot potato. <laughs> and then they said, they said yeah! we're not spending a dime on, on TV ads. We'll make a trailer and put it on YouTube. Yeah. And that's it. That's all. And then, oh. Well, the scariest thing in the movie was the Sony logo at the beginning. <laughs> Sony's logo looks too nice. You associate it with, like, quality like electronics products. I suppose. It needs to look more like the Mill Creek logo. Hey, it's, there you go. It's a piece of garbage <laughs> logo. That looks like that looks like uh, Slenderman should have been released directly to a 50 movie DVD pack. Yes. The Mill Creek logo looks like wingdings. <laughs> the the Mill Creek logo looks like Microsoft clip art. <laughs> <laughs> Sony needs to up up their logo, and by up I mean make a terrible one for their the quality of their pictures. It's, it's deceptive, really. It is. It's, oh, Sony, that's a big company. That's a big Japanese company. They make all sorts of electronics. I got my stereo from yeah, Sony. Sony, Sony Mo Mo <gasps> So we have a, a, a half movie dumped into theaters that nobody saw. Uh, here, here's when we went to buy our tickets. Here's what the theater looked like. Yep. It's all one color, and that color means nobody's in there. And then when we finally got in there, I think there were 
three other people. One of them was an elderly woman that I think just goes to every showing because she has nothing to do with her final days. She thought it was a workout video. <laughs> you know, we, we noticed the, the terrible Rotten Tomatoes score. We noticed the terrible ratings. We noticed it's the lead girl from Wish Upon. So we were hoping, we got to give up on this dream that we'll ever see another hilarious uh, mid-budget horror film. We tried with Truth or Dare. Yes. We tried yes. with this. Yes. Nothing will top Wish Upon and maybe The Bye Bye Man. The Bye Bye Man was bad, but nothing, nothing contemporary yeah. like Wish Upon. Wish Upon is a masterpiece <laughs> of comedy. I, I, I urge you all to check it out. Um, let's get that trending on Amazon again. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, that's a great film, but yeah, it started the same girl from that. So you're like, ooh, you know, it's like when you when you see a Cameron Cameron Mitchell film. Yeah. Oh, it's got Cameron Mitchell in it. We're guaranteed low production quality. Yeah. This oh, it's, it's got like this girl. <laughs> yeah. So that that's the backstory. Uh, there there's the Wisconsin connection, and then when they showed the map of like missing children. I saw Wisconsin and I looked at it real close. Oh, it was only for they? a second, but there was nothing. It was like, I think closer to Madison, maybe. Mm. There wasn't a pin in Waukesha. I was looking for a little, like, like a, a little Easter egg like or something. Easter egg, yeah, where they referenced it. You know? I, I don't blame them for not at all. Although they do kind of mention there's like a little monologue by the main female's little sister at the end, where it's supposed to be like, a, I guess it's supposed to be like to leave you trembling when you leave the theater, like, Slender Man can show up anywhere. and. And he is, it's sometimes it's not even what he does that's horrifying. It's what he causes other people to do. Yeah. I was like, this is pretty fucking sickening. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ. Well, that brings up an interesting point. I mean, it, it, was, it was a fine move for Marcus and I think other theater companies like AMC decided not to play it in, in the radius. Yeah. Um, because what happened, you know, awful. Those little girls got delusional or crazy or tricked into trying to murder their friend. Terrible, terrible story, um, but you know it was a real life event, and and it's kind of weird because Slender Man's a fictional internet character, so then you have that where it's like younger people are influenced by it, and so you don't want to like like it said in the movie, yeah. start this kind of infection where so oh I'm thinking a movie's real. Um, when we were little, we watched Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, and stuff like that. Jason. <laughs> But you know it's not real. Mm. This is kind of bordering on reality because young... There is that real horror story connected to Yeah, it, where yeah. young kids read... It's like an urban legend almost, mm. where they read it on the internet and they think it could be real, but they're not sure. So they're, impre they're impressionable. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, like... Uh, but it's like, what what is the off-limits uh, for making a movie about something? You make movies about Vietnam War. Yeah. Lots of people died in the Vietnam War, were affected by it, 9-11, you know, stuff like that. There's movies made about all sorts of, there's a Charles Manson movie coming out. Oh, right? sure. Uh, Quentin Tarantino. So, like, are they not going to play that in California? Yeah. So it's like, eh, it's, a, it's an ethical debate. But it wasn't a movie about uh, Morgan Geyser and Anissa Weir. It no. Was, it wasn't a true life story. That would have been more interesting uh, to segue into the film. Yeah. Um, well, well if, they, if they made like a dramatic film that did it tastefully, but this is just sure. like a cheapo oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, movie that they're trying to make a quick buck on. Yes, they're trying to from make a, it yeah. from a, a known I think that's, property. I, I think that's the real like the the real angle here is that a war movie has like a message, you know, to the born on the Fourth of July or something. You're not glorifying Vietnam, right? You're 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 telling a story and you're trying to have an emotional impact. Uh, they are basically like con artists. What's popular? Let's grab this. Let's make a buck and move out of town. Yeah. So, and I think people see through that. Which, it, well, it's funny because we looked up the screenwriter after the fact because this movie is all teenagers and the dialogue is fucking terrible. And so we looked up the screenwriter and uh, he, the guy who was writing realistic teen dialogue, here's his picture. This is who they relied on. But we looked him up and he's done, aside from he wrote L, the Paul Verhoeven movie from a couple years ago that was critically acclaimed. But aside from that, it's nothing but direct-to-video garbage, including, and some people might not remember this or know about this, but in the early 2000s, there was like a glut of direct-to-video uh, movies based on real-life serial killers. And this guy that wrote this movie wrote, he wrote the Dahmer movie, another Milwaukee connection. He wrote the John Wayne Gacy movie. And so it's like, I guess that's his thing. 
nothing but garbage, and yet somehow, uh, I don't know how we wrote L, I don't know how that fits into you know, all this, but... It's possible it was a database mistake. <laughs> That's true. S same exact name. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, there's a part where Wishpon Girl comes over and the younger sister of her friend is like, can I come hang out with you guys? And she goes, easy, Grasshopper, maybe next time. And I'm like, is that a Kung Fu reference? <laughs> <laughs> like the David Carradine show from 1960? <laughs> like, no, 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 yeah. no, no. Teenagers not referencing Kung Fu. Yeah, 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 no. That's not even They're not even referencing Kung Fu, the adventure continues. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it's painfully, painfully obvious. Um, well, then there's just general dumb dialogue. Like they talk about uh, how Slenderman, he spreads like a virus, but not like a real virus, like a computer virus. It's like the same thing. But where it infects yeah. and it spreads. It's but the she, exact same thing. She goes on to explain that even further. She's like, where it's, it's a computer virus in your hard drive, except for your hard drive is your brain. <laughs> That's an actual line, by the way. Except the hard drive is your brain. I am king. I will help you. Uh, yeah, so there was a, there was a, the, the roly poly fat kid. <laughs> and I was like, he's, Slender Man's gonna make him eat candy. Yeah. And then nothing happened. I was waiting for that. Like they're like almost like a Nightmare on Elm Street thing, especially more as the sequels went on. It's like he has you have your fear. They established that in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> ew, ew, ew. Freddy exploits that to scare you and eventually kill you. <laughs> ironic deaths. Yes, ironic deaths. And instead, this movie has nothing. Yeah, and, and I'm curious, like, not that it would help too much, but I, I would want to know what was cut out, because uh, this movie uh, has absolutely nothing in it. It has a setup, and then nothing happens for the remainder of the film. It sets up Slender Man, the girls sure. are having a little like, like sleepover party, and they look up Slender Man on the internet, and I guess a video on the, that's posted on the internet makes Slender Man start to haunt them in real life. All out of the ring. But then the rest of the movie is just, there's no like story progression. There's no plot. It's just scene after scene of one of our characters wandering around and then Slender Man's in the corner. Well, if the first girl goes missing, then they set up, if you look into Slender Man's eyes, you go crazy. Second girl goes crazy. By well, they, crazy, they, they establish early on, it's, Slender Man will react differently to you depending on who you are. Ooh. And so that's sort of like a, like a, okay, then that means that nothing in the movie, like there's no way to determine where the story's gonna go or what's gonna happen with that, anybody. It's just whatever. That's my big point that I always wanna get to with horror films yeah. is, is rules. And rules are so important. Um, because you have to know what's happening. <laughs> you have to why, know what to be scared of. That's why Nightmare on Elm Street is such a perfect script and perfect idea, because you know the rules. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to be scared of if you don't know consequences or rules. Right. I, the, I've said it a million times. And, and well, the movie never feels like it's going anywhere. The thing's like, it's like almost exactly 90 minutes, and it felt like it was three hours, yeah. and it felt like it could have ended at any time because nothing moved anything forward. Right. Um, the story elements are first girl to disappear, she was interested in Slender Man secretly. Yeah. Uh, and so she chatted with someone who, about Slender Man, she looked at videos, she's the one who gets uh, kidnapped first. Then Wishpon Girl really starts digging into it because the other two don't really care too much. I thought she, Wishpon Girl was supposed to be the lead and then she's just not. No. She digs into it and she finds out, oh, you have to give Slender Man an offering of something that you care about. So they bring out like, one girl brings like a picture of her and her dad and this is a quilt my grandma made when she was dying in the hospital. Uh, this is my favorite teddy bear. And then they like rip them up and throw them in the way. I'm like, mm -mm. <laughs> Dang, that's not what Slender Man's talking about. Yeah. He's talking about stabbing your friend 19 times. And they couldn't um, say that in the movie <laughs> though. <laughs> yep. Um, and then, and then, then the one girl, even though she made an offering, Slender Man shows up in her bedroom and I guess chokes her. And then she looks in the mirror and there's nobody there. 
then she's crazy, which makes sense in the cut scene where she stabs herself in the eyeball. Right. But then she just disappears. She's just gone the from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> then main girl. Uh, who has a little sister. Who has a little sister. Her little sister has a panic attack and ends up in the hospital. And I think Slender Man is trying to kill the little sister. I, I don't know what's happening. Well, there's a revelation of sorts where Wish Pond Girl, we find out that she took little, the, her friend's little sister oh, right. into the woods, that, yeah. I, I guess, as a sacrifice. They make it very vague. There might have been more that was cut, so it didn't resemble the real life incident. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, so then yeah. Slender Man has her in his grasp, but what, I don't know what that means. The It's like they said, well, we need some kind of origin for Slender Man because it, we can't just say somebody photoshopped it on the internet <laughs> so uh, 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 wish upon girl goes to the library oh yeah she goes to the library to look at the internet library uh, yeah she has to go to the library to use their computer to log on to to AOL <laughs> uh, and, and, and do some research yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but she does find a, like a book about the paranormal Although there is a lot of phones and iPhones and chatting and stuff in this, so that was probably a rewrite by some 18-year-old intern at the studio. He looked at the script, he's like, what the fuck is this? People can see each other on their phones? <laughs> <laughs> like the Jetsons? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's, it's called FaceTime. What? <laughs> But anyway, so the point I was making was Wishpon Girl goes to the library and does her research, which says Slender Man is a bioelectric paranormal interdimensional being. Uh, yeah, something. Uh, there's stories all over the world going back to the, the Pied Piper of Hamlin. You steal children from this culture, this culture, to this culture. They all have a creepy monster and lores and histories, mystical legends about creatures that steal children. It's probably all Slender Man. Slender Man's what he looks like now in the 2000s. And but as it, we learn, he can also be a tree. He's, he's also has some connection a to trees. A creepy creature in that. Uh, and then, so it's like, it's like, it's not like uh, Freddy Krueger was a guy who killed children and got burned alive, so his evil yeah. spirit hung around and can kill you in your dreams. It's just like, got it. Slender Man's something. Yeah. And he could just do anything. Well, that's, that's the. He'd do anything. That's the ultimate problem with trying to make a Slender Man movie is that the things that people think are interesting or creepy about Slender Man are how, like, you just see random photos. And it's like, oh, it's a photo. I don't know the context. I don't know the backstory. But there's, like, a creepy thing in the background. And that works in the context of just, like, looking up random shit on the Internet. When you try and make a narrative story out of that, it loses everything that makes the idea of Slender Man interesting to begin with. <laughs> the actual scary story is that two girls in real life got fucked up by the internet so badly they tried to murder their friend. That's a real that, life horror that's story. That's a real scary story. Right. But, but but even as far as like creepypasta, not just Slender Man, but all that shit in general, it's it's the idea that it's just like created like, on the internet. Yeah. It's little snippets of things. It's a photo here. It's a short story there. Mm -hmm. And there is no attempt to put it in the framework of like a conventional narrative feature. It's its, its own thing. Yeah. So it might have been to their benefit that they didn't try to over-explain. No, but they, they under-explain for the type of movie they're making. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't work on any level. That's the problem. Yeah. I mean, it is a good, like, challenge to say, like, how do you make Slender Man movie, you know? Uh, see, I think also the problem, too, is that this movie was, like, like a flat line in terms of... Um, scares and moments and even like oh god it was just so ugly looking the the, the very first shots are uh, uh, extreme handheld close-ups of two of the girls sitting on like bleachers yes talking and it's like this and you're like what am i looking at where are they yes. why is it shot like this there's numerous extreme close-ups at locations and and part of me is wondering and like did they do that to like like save money on like extras and, and locations, uh, and, you know, that sort of thing. And I'm be. like, why is this movie so claustrophobic? Why is it so ugly? It's so flat looking. I mean, even though it, it just starts, you know, it also just ends, but yes, it just we'll starts. Get into that. And I was like, why isn't there an opening like 
where there's a little girl like at her family's campsite and she wanders off and you know and, ah, and she's running and she's screaming and she drops her teddy bear yeah. <laughs> Or a yeah. group of kids sitting around a campfire saying, sure. let me tell you about Slender Man. Yeah, well, sure. This fell, that, that, that's crazy. I'm, I gotta go off and, and have a leak. Yeah. Uh, and he goes off and <sighs> smokes a little doobie and then <clears throat> I mean, I guess, you know, you're, you're talking kind of goofy, uh, horror cliche, but. Well, it's uh, better than absolutely nothing. You gotta have some kind of spooky opening to start off your film to, to establish what this creature w will do to you. Or start it completely grounded in reality, get, a, get, get us where we understand these characters and like them, mm. so when you start introducing the horror, we give a shit. Well, we're supposed to like them when they have their slumber party and they're, they're talking teenager talk. Oh, wow. Do you like Billy? I like Billy. Oh, uh, you spend too much time running track. My dad drinks, and sometimes I wish I could just go away. Slenderman, Calgon, take me away. They wouldn't know Calgon, take me away. Maybe they would if they know Grasshopper. Screenwriter knows, <laughs> Cause screenwriter knows Calgon, oh, take me away. I gotta go take a bath. Calgon, take me away. <laughs> How do you know about that ad campaign from 1982? <laughs> that does it! Lose your cares in the luxury of a Calgon bath. There, there is some random imagery that's actually kind of interesting looking. It feels out of place because it's nothing more than random imagery. Like it doesn't connect with anything. Like you're, you're speaking of the hospital sequence. Yes. Um, the girl, our lead, I forget her name. Uh, uh, she, her, her sister's in the hospital, and she keeps having like out of body experiences or dreams, waking dreams, something. So that's the thing was we don't know. She's walking around the hospital, and everyone like kind of looks creepy. And she walks past rooms. There's and, like a w woman with super long hair, and the orderly's like brushing it, but he has no eyes. Yes. It's like Jacob's ladder the looking lady, or something. Yes, yes, lady with a missing face. Rah, yeah. Something distorts. Neat. Very reminiscent of a scene from Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, but in yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, uh-oh, our character is in a dream. Yeah. Our character has fallen asleep. She is in danger of being killed in real life because when Freddy finds her, he will stab her. This is I like, understand the things that are happening in the story. I understand what's happening in the story, and I understand the danger this character is in that we like. But in here, it's... Girl, yeah. The girl wanders around. The creepy imagery happens because it's a sleeping? horror movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It she keeps awake. Nonsense. It is scene after scene of one of our characters wandering around and then Slenderman. Not a lot of jump scares though. No. no. Instead, they replaced it with nothing. It They're... seemed like everyone was like a zombie. Yes. Like they were just like bored and dead inside. And there was one moment that stuck out when uh, Wish Upon Girl goes to the little library, and then and then the library is like this dark, dingy-looking place, and then and then she has a a, a Slender Man attack sequence. Mm -hmm. Slender Man's like, yeah, and he's stretching out the bookshelves, and he's like, I'm gonna get you. His Slender Man doesn't talk, but it would be great if he did. <laughs> and, and and then all of a sudden, like, you know, oh, her face turns into Slender Man's face. She's yeah. Like, and then, bam, she's knocked back into reality when she hits a book cart. And there's a pre-established librarian lady who was, who was there before the dream sequence or nightmare sequence happened. And she's like, are you okay, miss? And then the girl gets up and she like wanders off and leaves. And, and then the scene's over. And then they show the librarian and she goes. <laughs> and really, I wanted that like, you know how on Nightmare on Elm Street, the adults don't ever believe them. Right. And they're always just like, oh, you're just having a dream. You're crazy. And so the librarian's just like, oh, just lay off the booze, honey. Go, go back to class. I really had a scary incident with the Slenderman. Sure you did. Get the fuck out of the library. It's closing soon. You need that. You need yeah. those little, like, like moments where, where... They make the characters feel almost helpless. And yes. that's what makes you yes. fear for them. Where the adults don't believe them. Yeah. They go to try to get help. So-and-so was kidnapped by the Slenderman. Here, look at all this evidence. Slenderman, that's just some crazy internet phenomenon. You kids, you kids and your chat boards, get out of my office. You, you need <laughs> stuff like that. You need humanity. Yeah. You need people acting like people. This movie was just like, it's like a flat line. 
sucked. <laughs> sucked. <laughs> and so that's where I blame the director. Yeah. Where the director's, if, if he cared, I mean, you have a script by this old hack, <laughs> right? And he's like, and a director would say, okay, how about so-and-so does this? How about they have this quirky characteristic? Or how about so-and-so does this or says this? Or this side character in the background does this? I don't know. Give it some life. Yeah. What was that? I think this is how we get Katie back. Well, should we, let's talk about the, the end of the movie, which is to say the movie just stops. No, there's We're a done conclusion. Now. There's a conclusion. I didn't know what was happening, but there was a conclusion. Well, right? kind of. I mean, they establish early on, you have to sacrifice something you care about to Slender Man. And so they have the, early on, yeah, they, they have the photo of the dad or whatever. Apparently those weren't things they really cared about or didn't care about enough or something. And so uh, the main girl's little sister is now being haunted by Slender Man. Uh, uh, Wishpond girl gets pulled out of a window by Slender Man and she's never seen again. Uh, black girlfriend has just vanished from the movie. Boyfriend character uh, shows up in class and he's got like a bruise on his arm and he's acting weird. She's like, what's, what's wrong with you? And he just kind of goes. And then he's never seen in the movie again. Don't know what that's about. He, he, she told him not to watch the video, but you know he, he did. He watched the video, I guess, but there's no conclusion to it. There's, we don't see what happens to him. Lots of disappearing characters. Um, More disappearing characters than the Avengers Infinity War. Why is it dead silent? Uh, so then the girl realizes that she needs to sacrifice herself to save her sister and save all of her friends. So she goes into the woods and she says, Slender Man, I'm here, take me away. And Slender Man turns into a tree and absorbs her. Uh, and then the movie's over. I don't know what happened to the other friends. We don't really know what happens to the sister other than she survives. Well, she says, Slender Man, take me. And then he's like, okay. And then she runs. Oh yeah, and then she tries to get away. And then he takes her forcefully. It would have been a better ending if, if Slender Man I guess, the, I guess this would have been tasteless too, but it would have been a better ending if Slender Man had uh, the three other girls like um, kind of held hostage almost. Well, that's what I was waiting for. And then yeah. she sacrifices herself and her friends are let free. Or, They're all back. Or, or he tricks her or something. Or she takes her little sister into the woods. It, it's time to hang out with us. Cause that was set up earlier. Yeah. It's, I, I want to hang out with you girls. Hey, well, you want to hang out with us? Come on. And then. Like a dark ending. Dark. It is a horror movie. And Slenderman goes, and then they say, you sacrificed your little sister? Well, it was either her or the three of you. Yeah. Slenderman made a real tough choice because he's a real bad guy. He's what they call a horror movie villain. <laughs> um, and, and he made me do it. And, and Instead, they, he's just a tree. And then they say, was it worth it, girl? Was it worth it? And then they, and she goes like this, and then and then cuts the slender man and goes, <laughs> and then that echoes over the credits. Yeah. So and this this movie did nothing. It sucked. It was so boring. It's it it's not asleep. even it's not a complete movie. That's the thing. Like the stuff that was pulled out of it, uh, the the hampering down of anything horrific to get a PG thirteen, the fact that they pulled out so much of the story, the the horrific elements that it's not even a horror movie anymore. It's just nothing. Yeah. It's, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. Just let this, let this whole, whole thing just die. <laughs> I'm not talking about Slender Man, I'm talking about Sony Pictures. Oh. Well, you, you can't spell Sony without N-O. Do you work for our ad department? <laughs> You can't spell Sony without Y. <laughs> A one up, you bitch. <laughs> and credit. <laughs>